former naval chaplain who dared to pray in Jesus' name and made waves not only in the Navy but around the world. And he is with us today on today's issues. Uh, chaplain, welcome. God bless you, Dr. Ray, and God bless you, Tim Wildman, and God bless the ministry of American Family Association. I've uh, followed you for years, and you've helped me personally when I took a stand to pray in Jesus' name. Tell us that story, Gordon, for those who don't know. Sure. Well, many of your listeners may remember, in 2006, the Secretary of the Navy wrote a bad policy, Second Nav Instruction 1730.7c, and this policy required non-sectarian prayers should be said by chaplains if they're outside of Sunday chapel. In other words, don't pray in Jesus' name. Oh, sure, you can do that in a Sunday chapel, but if you set one foot out of the chapel, you can be punished by your commanding officer for disobeying orders if you use the word Jesus in your prayers. Well, I read this policy, and I said, if they're going to punish chaplains who pray in Jesus' name, then I want to be the first. So I volunteered to violate that policy as a test case. I stood in front of the White House on a Thursday morning in my full-dress uniform, and I prayed in Jesus' name on national television. And I violated that policy. Well, they uh, took me to a misdemeanor court-martial, and I was found guilty of worshiping in public. The judge enforced that exact same policy against me and said that since I was not in a Sunday chapel, that I was guilty of disobeying lawful orders. What happened? Well, I lost my career. I, uh, at that point, had a 16-year award-winning career. Uh, never had any brush with my commanders, but uh, I was honorably discharged after my guilty verdict, and thanks be to God, I was later vindicated by Congress. The United States Congress, thanks to many of your listeners, uh, received 300,000 petitions by angry Americans. I had an 85% public approval rating. Most people disagreed with the Navy, and Congress rebuked the Navy and ordered the Secretary of the Navy to rescind that same bad policy that was enforced against me. So 1730.7c is no longer on the books, and now all the other chaplains, thank God, are free again to pray in Jesus' name. So we won the war even though I lost my battle. Gordon, that's a pretty bold thing to go in front of the White House and in, in, in full-dress uniform and pray in Jesus' name. You did it. It worked. The, the policy was overturned. Do you any regrets now looking back or on balance? Are you glad you did what you did? Well, people ask me, chaps, that's a great price that you paid. You lost a 16-year career. You lost a million-dollar pension. You, know, you and your wife were evicted from your home on the, on the Navy base. But was it worth it? Would you do it all over again? And, of course, I say yes. Because Jesus is worth more to me than all the other things that I left behind. And hopefully someday God will make that right. And I, I, if not in this life, then in the life to come. I do currently have a, a lawsuit in the D.C. Court of Claims. My uh, representative in court is Commander John Wells, former Navy lawyer, who is uh, defending me, and, and hopefully the court will someday uh, restore my pension. We're talking to Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, um, which none of you listening can spell. Uh, <laughs> Gordon, can you spell your own last name without thinking I had about it? At a, at a very young age. You know, I won the spelling bee when I was in sixth grade. So. Well, no wonder with a name like Klingenschmidt, you know, you got an upper hand on your other classmates there having to spell your own <laughs> Last name, but I'll spell it in case folks want to know because uh, they may want to do, you know, find out more about your organization. I'll give you an opportunity to give your uh, address uh, in just a minute. But James spells his, uh, Gordon spells his last name K L I N G E N S C H M I T T. Um, what is your website? Our website is prayinjesusname.org. Again, that's prayinjesusname.org. And through that website, we have now delivered 4 million fax petitions to Congress for, since 2007, defending many other people, pro-life, pro-marriage, pro-Jesus, and pro-Israel views. And many people can sign our petitions at PrayInJesusName.org. At Chapman, we hear uh, stories about uh, it becoming more difficult for Christians to be 
outspoken or at least just honest about their faith inside inside the various branches of the military if you run the the clock forward from 2006 until 2013 i mean i know you said that the policy that you were objecting to thank goodness was overturned but what's the what what's the status on those who wish to be christian and outspoken and serve in the military today is it possible well, uh, I have bad news and I have good news, so let me share that in sequence if I could. The first is the bad news. Uh, this year, after receiving advice from the anti-Christian complainer, Mikey Weinstein, uh, the Pentagon spokesman, Lieutenant Commander Nate Christensen, came out and said, quote, religious proselytization is not permitted in the Department of Defense. Court martials and non-judicial punishments are decided on a case-by-case basis. So they were literally threatening to court-martial any Christian chaplain or troop who talks about Jesus Christ. Uh, And, of course, that caused a great outcry. I'm sure many of your listeners complained to their congressmen. Many congressmen wrote to the Pentagon. Uh, So they backpedaled a little bit. And the next week, the same spokesman, Lieutenant Commander Nate Christensen, came out and said, oh, well, what we meant was, Service, quote, service members can share their faith, evangelize, but must not force unwanted attempts to convert anyone, proselytize. So they're saying it's okay to evangelize, but it's not okay to proselytize. Does anybody know the difference between those two words? Uh, They're the same. Exactly. The dictionary says they're the same. But the next day, a different Pentagon spokesman, Lieutenant Colonel Laurel Tingley, came out and said this. Quote, when on duty or in an official capacity, Air Force members are free to express their personal religious beliefs as long as doing so does not make others uncomfortable. Proselytizing Mm -hmm. goes over that line, end quote. So in other words, evangelizing is when you talk about Jesus and everybody's comfortable. Proselytizing is when you talk about Jesus and some easily offended complainer is uncomfortable. So they've turned the First Amendment on its head. It no longer protects the rights of the speaker. It only protects the easily offended ears of the complainer. And you should be court-martialed if you talk about Jesus and somebody's uncomfortable. You know, this has not been a problem in our military's history ever before. I think this is a constructed straw man by the secular left in this country to try to try to eradicate uh, Christianity from from the military, that's that's what it sounds like to me, Gordon. It's the it's the PC crowd, and they they've found something else to go after. So, I mean, has this ever been a problem in our history's mili- in our military? Uh, Christians, uh, Christian chaplains praying in Jesus' name. Isn't this a recent phenomenon? Well, it has gotten worse, I suppose. Uh, this year, uh, you, you mean you mean my, you mean my... you mean? Excuse me for interrupting you. you mean, by worse, you mean? Worse, the uh, persecution against Christians. Yes, the persecution against Christians in the military has escalated under the Obama administration. That I can confirm. They continue to listen to uh, the Militant Religion Foes Foundation, who is led by Mikey Weinstein. He has a different name for it. But um, they have continued to threaten Christians, and that goes against everything our founding fathers stood for. Of course, General George Washington Uh, On the 7th of July, 1776, appointed chaplains and said they will be paid as officers, and any soldier who disrespects the chaplain in church should be court-martialed by order of General George Washington. So now, 200 years later, everything's upside down. They're court-martialing or threatening to the chaplain if he talks about Jesus and somebody gets offended. You know, Gordon, it seems as if the, 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 what happened here is, well, you've got a policy where it's almost as if if you're in the military, you say to yourself, okay, if everybody around me agrees, I can speak out for my faith. But if there's any doubt, if there's somebody here who might disagree, it seems like the, seems like the, the necessary implication of that is what they're really saying is when in doubt about your faith, don't speak up at all. So this policy intentionally or not, must have a chilling impact on, well, not just Christians, but anybody of any religious persuasion who has any convictions. They might just say, hey, I want to preserve myself uh, in my career, so I'm just not going to say anything at all. Yes, uh, that's happened repeatedly, and people who do speak up 
are being punished. We just saw an example this week of a soldier who ordered Chick-fil-A sandwiches at his promotion ceremony, and for that he got a letter uh, put in his jacket and is now in a legal battle with his commanding officers. The good news is... Uh, Why? Well, Chick-fil-A sandwiches? What in the world? <laughs> what? <laughs> what is that? What? What is that about? What's well, in trouble because, for? Because he supported the Defense of Marriage Act, which actually is federal law, but it's being rejected by the Obama administration, and they're uh, instead enforcing the repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell. That has caused, the, the homosexual activist movement has not only caused uh, an increase in male-on-male sexual assault in the military. Actually, 14,000 men were sexually assaulted in the military last year compared to only 12,000 women. The first time that more men were assaulted, but only 2% of the assaulters are female. So that means there's a lot of male-on-male homosexual assault happening in the military. And the second thing is it's infringing on our religious rights. Uh, Here's the good news that I promise. We were able to insert in the National Defense Authorization Act of 2013, a new conscience clause, Section 533, that says protections of rights of conscience. Uh, The armed forces shall accommodate the conscience, moral principles, and religious beliefs of any member and uh, shall not use their beliefs as a basis for adverse personnel action. So that protects not just chaplains, but any troops who voice a moral or religious objection. That is the law now. It was signed by President Obama, even though he complained about it. Uh, Unfortunately, the Pentagon is not enforcing this law. Instead, they're, uh, you know, still pushing for homosexualization of the military, including military chapel buildings. Well, that's our next battle. We're trying to protect chapel buildings in all 50 states who are now being forced to be open for homosexual marriages. Uh, even if it's illegal in your state of Mississippi, for example, uh, they must, the chaplain must turn over the keys to his chapel building for a gay wedding, or else the chaplain can be punished in court martial. Mm. Where was this? I, I remember hearing about this. Where was this guy, this uh, who who was punished uh, for for the Chick Fil A sandwiches and the supporting uh, the Defense of Marriage Act? Um, Well, his name was not disclosed, but he has the same lawyer as I do, Commander John Wells out of Louisiana. I can put you in touch with him and interview him. He's representing many Christians, including my case in Washington, D.C., and he's recently been been on Fox News and granting other interviews. Yeah. Okay, we're talking to... uh... But what I, I, I'm not to belabor the point. But what what is the essence of the complaint against him? Well, the essence of the complaint was uh, that he was being insensitive and he's no longer a team player because he voiced a personal or political view. Uh, and the Pentagon's trying to backpedal and saying, "Oh no, he's really not in trouble." But that wasn't true last month. I mean, he does have paperwork against him, and. Uh, Now they're just trying to backpedal for public relations. But the military spokesman will lie to the public. They did that in my case. And I'm concerned that uh, when the documents come to light that this won't all be proven correct. You can go to our website, by the way, American Family Association, AFA.net, and on the right-hand side of the front page we have a... uh a article on this and an action email action alert on this with several examples, some of which uh, uh, has been mentioned here already in the last few minutes about Chaplain Gordon. And that is uh, examples of what's going on. We're not making this up folks. I know this sounds crazy. Some of it sounds not in America. I can't believe that. You can't do that to people. Well, it's being done. And uh, uh, that is persecution of Christians inside the military. What's happened is, the uh, <clears throat> secular leftist here, the humanist, the atheist, uh, the politically correct crowd, they've gotten in positions of influence in, uh, in the military, unfortunately, and they're, and they're trying to uh, suppress the Christian faith in particular. They're singling out the Christian faith. I want to ask you this, and we got examples.